In this video, we're going to look at limiting reagents. So right now on the screen, you can see a question asking how many burgers you can make. Assuming we're going to need one of uh, one bun, one cheese, one lettuce, and one hamburger, uh, which one of these is going to get used up first? So quick mathematics tells me that uh, we only have enough lettuce to make three burgers. After that, we're going to be out of lettuce. So the lettuce is going to act as a limiting reagent. It determines how many burgers we're going to make. And this is exactly like in a chemical reaction. We've got two reactants combining, one of them gets used up, and that will tell us how much of the final product is actually made. Okay, so limiting reagents, we're going to need information from a couple of sources. Firstly, we're going to require a balanced equation. And then secondly, we're going to need what I like to call the boxed expression. And the boxed expression contains three pieces of information. Firstly, it's got uh, X grams, it's got one mole, and it's got Avogadro's number, where X is going to act as a molar mass. And generally, we're really only going to need sort of this portion of the expression to solve these questions. So let's take a look at one. Okay, so we've got a balanced equation here. And the question is, how much NH3 is produced when 60 grams of N2 reacts with 10 grams of NH2? So for the moment, I'm going to pretend that this part of the question doesn't even exist. I'm not going to deal with that. NH3, that's gone. What I want to do is I want to forget about one of the given numbers in the question and actually recalculate. So here's what I'm talking about. Uh, let's forget as well that there are 60 grams of NH2 in this question. What I want to find out is if we start with 10 grams of hydrogen, in the perfect world, how many grams of N2 are going to need to react absolutely perfectly with it? So because we have two different substances on the go, we are going to need three steps to solve this. Now, first step one, or step one here is going to require the box expression. So what we're going to need is we're going to need the one mole and the X grams. To get things to cancel out properly, we're going to have to put grams on the bottom. So we're dealing with H2, so we need essentially the molar mass of hydrogen gas. So if you look that up, it's about 2.016 grams of hydrogen. I'm going to be able to cancel those units out. So if I have that many grams of hydrogen, I have one mole of H2. I'm going to put that on the top. Second step, number two, is going to be a mole ratio. Mole ratios come from a balanced equation. So what two substances are we dealing with? We're dealing with H2, which has a 3 in front of it, and N2, which has a pretend 1 in front of it. So where do we want to put the three moles of hydrogen gas? Well, we've already got one up on the top here, so we'll put the next one on the bottom. So the moles of hydrogen gas can cancel out. And to complete our mole ratio, we'll put the uh, one mole of N2 up top. So our last part of our expression is, again, going to go back to using moles and grams. Uh, so if we have one mole of N2, we're going to need its molar mass on the top. Nitrogen's 14-ish, times 2 gives us about 28. So again, we can cancel out the appropriate units. So last step here is we're going to multiply all the numbers on the top. So if you've got your calculator, you're going to want to go 10 times 1 times 1 times 28.02, hit the equal sign. Then we're going to divide by 2.016, hit the equal sign, and divide by 3. And if you do that properly, it should turn out to be 46.33 grams of nitrogen gas. Now, this number is important, and we need an, an important statement here. Uh, unfortunately, I've scribbled over the statement here, but it says, therefore, we need 46.33 grams of nitrogen, but we actually have 60. Remember, back here, I did scribble it out. It said that we have 60 grams of nitrogen. So this is where you have to make a comment. Do we have too much nitrogen, or do we have not enough? I like to think of this in terms of money. We've... Uh, uh, we, we're going to make a purchase, and it's $46, and I, we actually have $60. So we've got more than enough money. We've got excess money. So what we've discovered is that N2 is, in fact, in excess, and that's good. So if N2 is excess, the other chemical in this equation, H2, must be, lim must be limiting. And that's important because we need the limiting reagent to continue on to the next step. So we've got our question here. Now we're going to actually go ahead and solve the mass of NH3 produced. So we'll write that down. We'll set that equal to, what do we set it equal to? We set it equal to our limiting reagent, our 10 grams of hydrogen gas. So we're done with the 60 grams of nitrogen. Uh, it's our excess reagent. We don't need that. So to finish this one up, we're uh, going to use the box expression again. So it'll look a little similar here to begin with. We've got the grams of hydrogen on the bottom. We've got one mole on the top. Again, that's coming from the box expression here. Our second step is our mole ratio. So we've got uh, a two with the NH3 and we've got a three with the H2. So we'll put those in the appropriate places to get the moles of H2 to cancel out, put it on the bottom. And the rest of the mole ratio, we'll put two moles of NH3 on top again from the balanced equation. And then back to the box expression where we have one mole of NH3, it weighs about 17 grams. We'll do our appropriate canceling. So 10 times 1 times 2 times 17.03 divided by 2.016 divided by 3 gives us about 
0.3 grams. And just to rationalize this, does our answer make much sense? Well, let's see, we put 60 grams together with 10 grams. So we put about 70 grams together in a reaction and we got 56.3, so it does make sense. If our answer was like 2000, that wouldn't make any sense, considering we put 60 together with 10.